think he did. I think, and, and it's sad because BNP. look, I'm quite critical right. of David Cameron, but in 2007 he wrote an article in the Observer in which he said we can't bully people into Britishness. We have to inspire them. Integration is a two-way street. It's not just about immigrant communities. It's about all of us. And that David Cameron disappeared. Four years right. later, he turns up in Munich right. of all places to tell us oh, that we need this muscular <laughs> liberalism and to talk like Douglas about forced marriages. Sorry, how many people have forced marriages in this country? And show me which cultural group defends forced marriages and which government defends forced marriages. I've yet to come across right. a single one. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled Religion of Peace. Douglas Murray, Storm, Muslim Apologies with Truth About Multiculturalism. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's start with the video. Go. Is it right that MPs tonight chose to deny, deny prisoners the vote? I don't agree. The man who brought this case uh, to Strasbourg, uh, John Hurst, um, was sent to prison for bludgeoning an old lady to death. The European Court of Human Rights decided his human rights had been violated by not having the right to vote. I think he violated every imaginable right of the woman who he bludgeoned to death and is still isn't sorry for. I think... I think that this... I think that this case... This case points to the terrible thing that is happening in Strasbourg which is that activist judges uh, and, and ambulance-chasing lawyers are creating a situation where the ordinary human rights of ordinary people are routinely being trumped by the unordinary rights of people who have behaved appallingly in society. And I have to say there is one other reason why I think this is an important thing, which is that when David Cameron was asked about this at Prime Minister's Questions, he said that the idea that Strasbourg could force prisoner votes on this country made him feel physically sick. There is a serious democratic problem when something which has no support in the House of Commons, very little support I think in the country, and something which makes the Prime Minister sick is nevertheless forced on this country. So I think there's a second reason why this is a good thing, which is it has shown that our Parliament remains sovereign and can override and ignore decisions from Strasbourg. That is a very important precedent. And only an hour to do it in. Carl Belizaire, please. Uh, do you agree with David Cameron that multicultural, multiculturalism in the UK has failed? This is the speech that David Cameron made this week where he talked about the doctrine of state multiculturalism that had encouraged different cultures to live separate lives. We failed to provide a vision of society to which they feel they want to belong. And we've even tolerated segregated communities behaving in ways that run completely counter to our values. Douglas Murray. Yes, I think he was right. Um, and I think we should start this by just reminding ourselves what multiculturalism is not. Multiculturalism is not multiracialism. It isn't pluralism. Uh, for years, the multicultural policy has been able to glide along in part because of that misunderstanding. Because of the misunderstanding that when you talk about multiculturalism as a policy, what you're talking about is solely immigration or multiracialism or so on. Uh, it's allowed itself an incredible uh, easy ride, not least by the fact that this confusion has meant that any critic of multiculturalism has been immediately decried for years now as a racist what of some kind. What do you understand kind. by multiculturalism? Multiculturalism the as a policy. Cameron described. As a policy, multiculturalism is the following. It is the idea that there is effectively no such thing as British society or British culture. There are simply different communities which you're born into. If, for instance, you're born into a community of an Asian background, you will be treated by government throughout your life as a member of the Asian community. If you're born into some other uh, a racial or, or religious grouping, you'll be regarded in that way. And that anything in that group could be different from what the norm in society goes on. Let me give one quick, quick example I gave in, in a, an article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's, it's been quite commonly known in recent years, for instance, that girls of Pakistani origin have, at the age of 16, been taken out of British schools and married to older men. Now, if a white girl of 16 over recent decades had been married against her will to some randy old pervert who wanted to have his way with her, the state would have stepped in. It would have rightly said that that was an outrage. But, lo and behold, 16-year-old girls of Asian origin disappearing from their schools, nobody wanted to mention it because it could be thought to be racist. Right. The idea was that there are different values for different people in society, and there is nothing more divisive than that, and I'm glad that David Cameron has called time on it.
maybe how far. Different, different values. Different values for different people in society. Well, and it's um, time to in answer time. to the question, I think he's wrong. I don't agree with Douglas's definition uh, at all. Um, I, believe, I'm, I believe I'm a product of multiculturalism, not just multiracialism. Uh, my father came to this country in 1966. He used to write lots of letters to newspapers with his views on the stories of the day, and he used to get dog litter through his uh, letterbox in response. Uh, that 45 years later, in my view, 45 years later, his son can sit here on Question Time with David Dimbleby and a Conservative minister and say that I'm a proud Briton and a proud Asian and a proud Muslim, I think is a testimony to the success of multiculturalism in this country, which is definitely not far to reason. And, and, and I'm, I'm just on, on Douglas's point, on Douglas's point about anyone who goes against multiculturalism is regarded as a racist. Uh, a, that's not true, but B, let's look at the reaction to David Cameron's speech. Uh, Nick Griffin said it was a provocative speech. When Nick Griffin says your speech is provocative, you know you're in trouble. The daughter of the leader, the daughter of the, leader of the French National Front, Jean-Marie Le Pen, said she wanted to congratulate David Cameron on his speech. And the leader of the EDL in Luton said, he's saying what we're saying, he knows what his base is saying. So when I hear reactions like that, I do worry about such speeches. Well, what do you think he was getting at? What was he trying to say? Do you think he was, he was speaking in a way that he intended to appeal? I think he did, I think, the, and it's sad because, BNP? look, I'm quite critical right. of David Cameron, but in 2007 he wrote an article in The Observer in which he said we can't bully people into Britishness, we have to inspire them, integration is a two-way street, it's not just about immigrant communities, it's about all of us, and that David Cameron disappeared. Four years right. later he turns up in Munich, right. of all places, to tell us oh, that we need this muscular <coughs> liberalism and to talk like Douglas about forced marriages. Sorry, how many people have forced marriages in this country? And show me which cultural group defends forced marriages and which government defends forced marriages. I've yet to come across okay. a single one. I've been very lucky. I've lived and worked all over the world. And um, Britain is by far, by far the most tolerant society I've ever come across. Okay. However, what I'm concerned about is that I think um, Douglas was right. What seems to happen is when something is said, there are minority groups of growing vocal um, ability who will find offence in whatever you say and find a channel to get that offence um, shouted about. And, and that, I think, is part of the problem we've got now. But the, the bottom line is we are an incredibly tolerant society. We should be very, very proud of that. Jackie Smith. Douglas Murray, do you want to come back on what Mehdi Hassan said? Well, look, I mean, both of the sort of left-wing people on the panel tonight, Mehdi and Jackie Smith, if you can still call Labour members left-wing, but it, both of them have done the same thing the left always does on this. You try to have a discussion about the failure of multiculturalism, and you have the BNP thrown in by Mehdi. They're told, well, the BNP member congratulated him, at least concede Mehdi, all sorts of crazy and horrible and disgusting people can jump on a bandwagon without meaning that it's the wrong thing to have said. It, they, maybe they're just opportunists. I suspect they are. And Jackie then throws in the example of, uh, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the EDL. And thinks, do you really think, Jackie, that, that that was what David Cameron was aiming to do? I mean, a couple of, you know, hundred people no, marching in Luton does not mean the Prime Minister of Britain should not be making no, a speech about a very should... serious no, 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 matter. I, I and this is a problem. The debate by the left is always attempted to be shut down by associating it with far-right extremists no, and racist groups no, instead no, of having no, a frank no, and no, honest no, discussion. I did not say that he shouldn't make the speech. And I said I thought the argument he made in the speech was right, and incidentally, it was a one, one that we had previously made. What I said was it would have been appropriate given that speech, to also say that when we're pr pr promoting shared British values against Islamist extremism, we should also do it against right And I think, I think you, can, you can belittle the idea of a couple of hundred extremists, but if you put yourself in the, in the shoes of a British Muslim in Luton or in other cities where the EDL have marched to live in fear of those groups, then I think they have a right for their Prime Minister not to go abroad to Germany and send them lectures from there on who isn't and isn't an extremist. Take a couple of points from our audience and then we'll go on to another question. Uh, the, the gentleman there, you say. And you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with the gentleman who just said that uh, British is a very, Britain is a very tolerant society. Yes, it is very true. It's a very, very tolerant society. Sadly, the tolerance of this country has been abused by certain religious groups. And I completely agree with Douglas Murray when he said that Mr. Cameron has done the right thing. And I hope Mr. Cameron means business. Now, Mr. Cameron was making this speech in the context of terrorism. Mm. 
And what he was trying to convey a message was how we target uh, terrorism. Unfortunately, this country in the last 15 years has not addressed the root cause of terrorism. The root cause of terrorism is bad teaching in religious schools. And that rubbish. has to be addressed fundamentally. It's rubbish. Mm. rubbish. rubbish. I mean, just we, 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 very, very briefly, we didn't get into this, but one of my other objections to David Cameron's speech is the idea, you want to give a speech on multiculturalism, give a speech on multiculturalism. You want to give a speech on counter-terrorism, give a speech on counter-terrorism. Don't pretend they're one and the same thing. Don't, in, don't offend our intelligence. Terrorism, terrorism is not a... Terrorism is not a cultural problem. Terrorism is a political problem. No, and it's a it's religious problem as well. Thing. And it's a religious problem. In your as view, well. Douglas, no, in the view a of a lot of problem. people, including the people who carry out acts of terror, who say they do it in the name of religion. They, they, also, they also say they, they, they do it because be. of foreign policy, and you Absolutely, always ignore that bit, don't you, Douglas? No, I don't. When they say they do it because of Iraq, you don't notice that. You at least listen to the reason they say they do it. Agreed. So why didn't he talk about foreign policy in his speech? He's willing to talk about foreign policy, as would David Cameron be. But you cannot keep on pretending that there is no religious component to the terrorism, because cultural. there is. I thought you said it was cultural. No, it was just... Oh, well, 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 stick, stick with religion. You're saying there is no religious component. I'm saying there is, is a there. religious component. Oh, I'm right, saying there's not right. a cultural component. Mm. The people who blew themselves up on the London Underground uh, were not people who couldn't speak English or didn't go to Absolutely, secular schools. Absolutely, that's the tragedy uh, of it. Well, that's then don't say the it's a cultural problem. No, but you're don't pretend that forced marriage. Because maybe you're doing what you're doing. Don't speak at once. Nobody can hear. So let's have a little bit of order, shall we? Let's have a question, please, from Gemma Perlin. Could the introduction of democracy to Egypt have the effect of destabilizing the Middle East and lead to a string of anti-Western extremist Arab states in the region? Well, the first thing is that the, uh, to get back to the question, I mean, the issue of democracy across the region. Uh, some of us have been arguing for many years that uh, Arab states, Muslim states, Muslim-majority countries have the same desire for democracy as the rest of the world. You used to hear people say about the Eastern Bloc, the Eastern Europeans can't cope with democracy. Lo and behold, they could. You used to hear it said about South America, the same thing. South Americans somehow can't cope with democracy. Lo and behold, they could. And the same thing is becoming clear across the Arab and Muslim world. The, uh, the uh, Lebanese Druze leader, Walid Jumblat, said that the site in 2005 of Iraqis going to the polls for the first time would have in time a seismic effect in the region because people would not see their neighbours going to vote and not want that themselves. Now this is coming uh, sometime after most of us expected it but uh, there are obviously problems and it's, it's, it's naive to walk into this and ignore some of the problems within Egypt. But do you, do the, you see, sorry, do you see Mubarak as Mehdi Hassan said as our person, the West person in Egypt? No. I mean, or, or do you think that we should have... I think it's equally patronising to the people of Egypt to assume they have had no role in their own country. Uh, however, this, the West has had a very complex and I think uh, unfortunate, regrettable uh, situation in recent years of thinking that, the, that stability and the pursuit of stability in the region was the most important thing. That has come back to bite us again and again, not least in the rise in anti-Western feeling across the region. There is a problem though, and it has to be flagged up to go back to the question, which is the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood, if it didn't have Muslim in the name, would be being described at the moment as a fascist political party. It has its roots in fascism. It is an extremist organization. Its offshoot, the Hamas in the Gaza, when it got into power, uh, immediately killed its opposition, and it hasn't had another election. It was just another one announced, July the 9th this year. There was meant to be another ele election in the Palestinian areas, the Hamas have said no. They are a one vote once political party. And we can't be as so naive because to think Americans we can't. To no, 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 no. They it cannot be so naive as to think that uh, the Brotherhood, if they came to power in Egypt, would be anything other than a disaster for the region. Well, the state do we is... have the right to intervene to prevent No, no, no. Let me, let me clarify this. So the following. It is very unwise for leaders like William Hague, David Cameron and Barack Obama to be saying who they would like to run Egypt. It's a choice for the Egyptian people and they should remain silent. But that does not mean that behind the scenes and elsewhere you cannot say that the government, whatever it is that comes in in Egypt, has to abide by, among other things, international norms, peace treaties, including the Treaty of Peace that has kept peace between Egypt and Israel for three decades now. And this is a very, very important thing, because if the Brotherhood comes in and says, as their leaders have said in recent days, that they will immediately block the Suez Canal and start a war with Israel, then we are collectively going to be, and the Middle East is going to be, in serious trouble. How can, you, how can you order a new government?
to abide by a treaty made by Mubarak. Well, in the following way, between you Egypt say, and Israel. In the following when way, you say you don't want him to be made by Sadat. In the following way, by mm. saying that, uh, by using soft power, by encouraging the country to go in a certain way, by making it clear that for Egypt to become a normalised country, it has to have a right. normal government. None up there. And in not, the, uh, in uh, the check uh, shirt, the blue check shirt. It's somebody with a striped shirt. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah I go think on, the big difference between Eastern Europe and the Middle East mm -hmm. is Islam. And some would say that Islam is not compatible with democracy. Okay. And, and, and tell that to the Indonesians. Yeah, Indonesia exactly. is the largest Muslim country in the world and is a democracy. So. The woman up there by the, on, on the left there. Yes. Um, I find what Douglas Murray is saying objectionable. He's saying in public, oh, the leaders, we mustn't say who should be in power in Egypt. But actually you're advocating behind the scenes action and covert action to influence it. And you also seem to me to be saying that the will of the Egyptian people, should they democratically elect the Muslim Brotherhood, who I notice you refer to as the Brotherhood, because it makes them sound more mysterious and dangerous, <laughs> that actually we yes, should start yes. interfering then and telling Egyptians who, uh, how, they, they should, how they should vote and well, how their right. government I, should behave. I, I hope I made it clear that I think that it would be regrettable for the Egyptian people, for the region and the international community, if an extremist organization like the Brotherhood took control of Egypt, did what... Wow, what an interesting debate. We can all tell this was really eat out to some extent. Based on the fact uh, Douglas have stated uh, multiculturalism has failed, has failed the, uh, the British people. And I kind of agree with uh, Douglas Murray to some extent. I believe uh, multiculturalism has its own advantage and at the same time it has its own uh, disadvantage. Uh, bringing allowing people come into uh, your country and practicing their own culture and, you know, situ uh, isolating themselves where their own culture is, I feel, to some extent, is good and to some extent, uh, it has its own disadvantage because I believe uh, British as a country, as a nation, should be governed by one law. People shouldn't be treated by uh, different laws because I believe people will tend to push their own ideology based on their own culture, based on their own uh, religion. Just like Douglas have stated uh, in this video that a lot of people tend to uh, isolate themselves within their own culture and fail to integrate uh, with the British culture, with the British uh, tradition, with the British value system. I, for one, I believe uh, if a country is to flourish, everyone has to have one mind. Everyone has to be governed uh, with one law. So in order for people to integrate uh, effectively, there's a need for them to uh, be governed by one law. You saying people have to be, uh, have to be treated based on the law that uh, is associated with their culture, I feel that is totally wrong. People should be treated, uh, should be treated with one law. I believe that's one of the reasons why uh, some uh, some. Muslim people, based on the video I watched some time ago, we are advocating that uh, they are Muslim and they want to be treated with Sharia law. That Sharia law should be legislated uh, in, in Britain, should be legislated in Britain, should be legislated in UK. That they don't want to be treated by uh, UK law. That they want to be treated by Sharia law. I believe all this is because of uh, multiculturalism and the Muslim scholar even made some example that uh, if British, uh, the Brit British people are to adopt uh, Sharia law, that they are, there's going to be uh, less crime rate. And he gave some example of uh, some Muslim countries that practice, uh, that practice the Sharia law and he stated some facts that those Muslim countries that practice Sharia law, that there are less crime rates in those countries, that British should also adopt uh, the Sharia law. And he also gave some example or some clause in the Sharia law that if you commit fornication, if you commit fornication, you are going to be, uh, you are going to be stoned to death. Uh, no, if you commit adultery, you are going to be stoned to death. If you commit for this, uh, fornication, you are going to be flogged hundred latches of cane in public. And I believe that's not the type of society in this 21st century that anyone want, wants. No one want to live under such laws. So I believe to some extent from what Douglas Murray have stated that 
multiculturalism have fa failed the British people. Because I believe everyone should be governed with one law. Everyone should go govern with one law. People should not isolate themselves to uh, living and practicing only what they are seeing in their own culture and failing to integrate uh, with the British culture. I believe that is totally unacceptable. That's why I believe Douglas Murray always talk about uh, British identity, that British identity is embodied uh, in British culture, it's embodied in British tradition, it's embodied in British value system. So I see no reason why you should come to a country and uh, and at the same time you fail to integrate by accepting the people culture, accepting the people's value. I feel that is totally wrong. And I feel it's because of this ideology that we have a lot of extremists because a lot of extremists failing, a lot of extremists, a lot of fundamentalists failing to integrate uh, with the British culture, failing to integrate integrate with the British tradition, failing to integrate with the British value system because they believe they can promote their own culture, they can promote their own ideology because the British people encourage multiculturalism and they tend to take advantage of that to perpetrate all sort of crime, to perpetrate all sort of uh, uh, crimes. And just like Douglas Murray always says that you living in a society, you have no right not to be offended. Definitely, someone is going to say something to offend you, but you don't need to uh, resort to violence. You just have to engage in a dialogue and try to come up with another better idea to make the person understand what you are trying to say, not to resort to violence. I believe that problem all comes because of multiculturalism. A lot of people tend to take advantage because they believe certain things are, are certain things are against their culture or against their belief or against their uh, our religion and because of that they, try, they tend to engage in all sort of terrorist acts so i believe you coming into a country as an immigrant or residing in a country there is a need for you to be able to adjust yourself in order for you to accommodate uh, the host country's culture to accommodate the host country belief system to accommodate the host country value system because I believe uh, 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 mass immigration can bring a lot of uh, economic value to the host country if the people coming in are the, are, are the right people and if the people coming in are ready to uh, accept the host country culture, are ready to inter integrate, integrate effectively, they can bring a lot of economic value to the host country. And at the same time, they can bring a lot of harm, a lot of discomfort to the host country when they fail to integrate effectively, when they tend to embrace their, own, when they tend to uh, impose their own ideology, when they tend to impose their own culture on the locals, which I feel is totally is totally wrong, and this issue should be addressed just like uh, the point Douglas have stated, the points uh, has stated. I believe all those things. It has a uh, uh, religious, religious, religious is part of it. Uh, uh, pol political motive is part of it, and I believe this issue should be addressed. And I've really learned a lot just by listening to Douglas Murray and every one of the speaker. And I believe a country should be uh, a country should govern its people with one law. There is no need of uh, uh, segregating in law and saying people have to be governed with. Uh, uh, Asian people have to be governed with Asian, have to be governed with Asian culture, Asian law, and uh, 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 the Afghanistan people have to be governed with Afghanistan law. I think there's no need for that. Everyone should be governed with the British law. Just by the example Douglas also stated about the Asian uh, young ladies uh, under the age of 15 system being uh, kidnapped and forced into into marriage, which I feel is totally wrong. I feel the government, in, in cases like this, the government should be able to step in and come up with a, a better policy to stop this, uh, this nonsense. And we can all tell, based on the point uh, we, uh, the speakers have stated and the point Douglas have stated, I've really learned a lot. I would also love to hear your comment regarding uh, this clause, if multiculturalism have really failed the British people. Keep the comment coming. Let's get a conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day.